Our countdown to first serve continues. Today's stop is Alva. We get to visit with the head volleyball coach of the Northwestern Rangers, Coach Fred Abishan, in his second season. And Coach, season number two, but really uh, you have a lot to live up to because season number one at Northwestern was pretty good. Records for the program in 23 wins, 12 conference wins as well, 12-4 and four in the GAC last season. Uh, I think at least uh, from an outsider's perspective, Looks like he was pretty successful. Talk about your perspective from the inside. Yeah, I couldn't have been happier. Um, well, I mean, I could have been a little happier, of course, but I, I couldn't have been happier with uh, the effort put forth by the girls last year. Um, they were they were tremendous. Uh, we we had we had some ups and downs, of course, and um, some difficulties on travel a few times. But other than that, uh, it was a it was a great season. I, I really enjoyed uh, being a part of it, but. The girls deserve pretty much all the credit. They they're the ones who worked hard every day and never gave up and 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 worked through all the challenges like any team does, you know, working through challenges. But uh, they did a great job last year. And you know, you say second season, but it feels like the third season already going into a <laughs> third year now. And uh, can't wait to get this second season going. I completely understand. I know it feels like that for a lot of folks. Well, listen, Coach, you do bring back some some uh, quality players from last season's program, all-conference performers in Sidney Miller and Katie Honeycutt. You had consistent uh, matches and starts throughout the year from Kate Dieterding as well. Talk about some of those who are returning for you. Yeah, those, those three in particular are, are very much uh, important to what we're going to be doing this year. Uh, I would say they're definitely the nucleus uh, of our of our system, both offensively and defensively, led by Sidney Miller, um, who is a three-time conference the defensive player of the week, and she did make all-conference. Uh, she's a tremendous asset to really come into her own last year and uh, and hasn't slowed down one bit. Uh, Katie and Kate, as you've mentioned, uh, both six rotation outside players will um, be leaned on heavily for us. They're, they're really good, <clears throat> and... At the moment, I wouldn't want anybody else in those two spots. Speaking now with Coach Fred Abishan from the Northwestern Rangers, whose team is picked in a tie for third uh, in the GAC West, according to the coaches this year. And I know that uh, you've had time to recruit. You've had time to do a lot of things, as you mentioned. It feels like a, a long season in that. But I, I know you were able to get some of the recruiting in before everything went sideways back in March. Talk about some of those recruits and new faces that are there in the program. We do have a couple of new faces, um, a lot of freshmen right now, but, you know, freshmen, it takes a while for them to become acclimated, you know, for them, thank goodness for the fall semester to be what it was. It gives them a chance to really adjust. And I feel that Carme Jones, freshman middle hitter is, is ready to play at this level. I think she's going to be a big impact for us. Uh, we had a couple of good transfers come in, uh, Madison Dillinger and uh, Raven Burns, uh, Morgan Bullinger, and they're all going to make impacts on this team uh, during this season. And then I think uh, another person that we are expecting a lot from is returning uh, sophomore Courtney Russell, uh, who was an outside hitter backup for us last year. She has moved into a starting role on the right side, and she has been very impressive. Um, and she's probably the one player on the team that all the girls look up to in a variety of ways that for a young player, she is ready to handle quite a bit. Coach, you were saying there were things you were happy about, obviously things that, that still even could improve from last season as well with the turnaround of the program. Uh, what do you see as, as one of the biggest things that, that made a difference last season to be able to have that kind of success? Um, <clears throat> wow, that's a, that's a good question. Uh, from my perspective, I just tried to approach things the way that I normally would. I, I think the biggest differences came from within, from within the team. Uh, there was a tighter bond with the girls. There was a, a looseness about them that learned how to enjoy the day a little more as opposed to feeling the pressure of we have to just go out and be the best player we can be every moment. So we kind of took a little more of a lighthearted approach. Not that I was an easy coach by any means, <laughs> but I think they kind of took it more as there's a little more freedom to be themselves as opposed to having to be, and no offense to any coach, but to being a robot, to being a, a perfect machine. And and I, I think that just kind of worked for us last year, you know, that loosened up approach. And uh, that and not giving up when we implement new things. We did some changes in our system last year. We ran a very unique defense mid-season. Uh, it took a few minutes for the girls to adjust, but once they did, I think it made the difference in our season. 
Coach, you have a 10-match GAC schedule, but you also have six non-conference games on the schedule, and I commend you for that. Uh, getting games uh, at this time and in this season, I know, can be challenging, but it's it's. I'm sure it's good for the girls, too, to look and say, hey, we get 16 opportunities. Things get underway on January 23rd as you will match up against Friends University out of Wichita, Kansas, and then the GAC schedule on the 27th. Talk about your year. Well, having a few extra matches is really important. You know, the, the girls are used to playing 30 plus, mm -hmm. uh, at least 30, 30 plus matches in a season. And for us to only have 10, that's a huge reduction. And, and for our seniors who will be playing their last semester uh, in the spring, all three of them, you know, they wanted to play more as well. So that was an immediate effort on my part, fully supported by Brad Franz and our administration of saying, yes, get a few more matches. It makes sense. But also, if we look at what's been happening since the beginning of the fall semester with professional sports and, and some of the D1s, games are canceled constantly. And I think we need to be prepared for the same thing. And to have a few extra matches, maybe we'll end up playing 10. I have no idea, but <laughs> I'd love to play all 16. But at least it gives us a little more freedom to, if we end up having to drop a match because of COVID, either our fault or somebody else's, that we have those games. Um, looking at uh, February 27th against East Central, there's no way I want to play that game without having something before playing them. You know, mm -hmm. uh, Cherie's going to come in there and, and and she's going to be prepared with that with that team. And I know that and I, I want to be prepared for them. But we, we have uh, Friends University, as you said. Uh, Martin Ian is an old friend of mine. We've known each other for a very long time. <clears throat> uh, I coached against him for 10 years while I was in the KCAC, and I know him even before that when I was at Hastings College. Um, and, and I called Martin up, and he was very, very gracious and said, yeah, we'll, we'll play you guys. Um, and I, I scheduled a home and away with them. The away game has already been moved. It's not been announced yet, but it has been moved to a different <laughs> date already, and that's just the way it's going to be uh, with COVID. But, um, yeah, we're excited to play them. Uh, he always has a good team. I, I have no doubt that they're, they're going to they're gonna push us and help us get ready for our first conference game. Well, as you mentioned, the first conference game against East Central, uh, that's on the 27th. In the meantime, uh, the Rangers picked in a tie for third, according to the GAC coaches poll in the Great American Conference Western Division. Coach Fred Abishan, thank you very much for taking time with us today. Success to you and your team this year. Joey, thank you so much. It's great to be with the GAC.